Good evening. Welcome to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in the Loop. My name is Pastor Ben Adams, and I'm so grateful to be back here after taking last week off. It's so great to be back and hearing beautiful preludes again. And uh, I'm very excited tonight on this fourth Saturday of Easter. I can't believe it's already the fourth Saturday of Easter, but it is, which is also sometimes celebrated as Good Shepherd Saturday. And tonight is very special uh, because we have our seminarian, uh, Taylor Walker, preaching for us tonight. So I have already been able to preview the sermon as her supervisor, so I've got a little bit of a sneak peek, and I know that uh, you will be blessed for hearing it tonight. Tonight is also an opportunity uh, to give thanks for our baptism. If you haven't already had to prepare a bowl of water uh, near you for your service, um, I would encourage you to do that now, uh, to just fill up a bowl of water and, and be ready for the Thanksgiving of baptism as we mark ourselves with the sign of the cross. But we want to just really make sure that everybody knows and hears a word of welcome as we begin our liturgy here tonight. We want you to know that you are welcome here no matter who you are or where you're from, no matter the color of your skin or who you love or marry, no matter your gender identity, your age, your ability, your documentation status, your voting record, even how you feel about organized church or religion, or especially right now, online church as a part of our spiritual journey right now. We hope that this is a space and a time where you can feel God's presence in real time and feel God's mystery surrounding you. So with all of that now said, I invite you to take a deep breath to prepare your hearts and minds for worship as we sing, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. 
Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A uh, reading from Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners, Peter and John, stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the holy people, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man had healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It became the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under, he under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. reading from first john we know this we know love by this that jesus christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another 
How does God's love abide in anyone who is who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before God whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do, do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from God whatever we ask because we obey the commandments and do what pleases God. And this is God's commandment that we should believe in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and love one another, just as Jesus has commanded us. All who obey God's commandments abide in God, and God abides in them. And by this we know that God abides in us, by the spirit that God has given us. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not keep care for the sheep. But I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay my life down for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down it on my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This day in the church year includes so many old favorite passages. Peter chastising the scribes for their lack of faith. Of course, David in the valley in green pastures by still waters. Jesus, the son of heaven, come down to be our good shepherd. And then there's John calling us little children, telling us to love. So many common themes in such an uncommon year. We're in Easter. I know that because the altar has flowers on it and the skies are blue and we sing Alleluia. But in some ways, it feels like we didn't leave Lent behind. Derek Chauvin's trial began on March 29th. He is the police officer who murdered George Floyd last year. The trial ended this week, and he was declared guilty on all counts. But every day since that trial began, United States police officers have killed three or more people every day. In fact, since this day last year, Good Shepherd Saturday, 1,306 people of God, beloved children, people who matter, have been killed by the police. 
Just saying that sentence aloud feels despicable. It's unbelievable. But actually, it, it is believable. It's life in America. It's life under empire. Listen to the names of these people God loves. Fat Guvan Vong, Andrew Brown, Doward Baker, Antonio Cantu, Edgar Luis Toraldo, Bradley Olson, Larry Jenkins, Robert Delgado, Alex Garcia, Sammy Barbosa, Jeffrey Sachs, Lindani Mayimi, Marcelo Garcia, Jacob Wood, Peyton Ham, Anthony Thompson, Pierre Alexander Shelton, Dante Wright, Faustin Gutigo, Joshua Mitchell, Deshaun Tanner, Douglas Barton, James Alexander, Devin Whiteagle Kendall, Tyler Green, Roy Jackal, Ira Mumber Sycap, Silas Lambert, Gabriel Caso, Jeffrey Appelt, Jose Aranas, Juan Carlos Estrada, Samuel Yeager, Noah Green, Nazareth Viertel, Deshaun Tatum, James Eiler, Steve Frostglass, Makia Bryant. All of these people were killed by the police in the last 23 days in this time of Easter. And we're supposed to sit here and proclaim Christ is risen? Death is defeated? We have overcome the grave? We haven't. This whole country is a graveyard. I know this isn't the sermon you expected me to preach. This isn't the typical Easter sermon. This isn't what people want to hear when they come to church during this time of celebration. In Easter, people want to be uplifted. And I promise there will be time for that. In Easter, people want to hear you are perfect as you are. And you are perfect as you are. God abides in you. But what is not perfect is this world. And we are part of it. We are participants, sometimes knowingly, sometimes unknowingly and the systemic sin that takes the lives of people God loves. Now this wrestling between, on the one hand, believing in a resurrected God, and on the other hand, the reality of our lives as we live here in this world, is something the author of First John thought a lot about. First John is sort of like an ancient commentary on the Gospel of John. So when you read John and the Johns, straight through, you won't see the words kingdom or good news or repentance. Matt and Mark and Luke say those words a lot. But the Johns say love, truth, no witness. To John, the gospel is God's love story to us, a people who live in a broken world, but believe in the wholeness of the kingdom to come. And our work as followers of Christ is to bear witness to the reality of this world while also following the resurrected Christ. And together, the witness and the following is called love. Well, what does that really mean? What, is, what does God expect of us? What does John expect of us? According to our text, to follow Christ in love, to live into the resurrection, it means something concrete. Mere faith, believing that Jesus is the son of God is not enough for John. Now I know Luther says we're saved by faith alone and that's true, but our task is harder and greater and more beautiful than faith alone. Faith and love are the fruits of a single grace. So if we call ourselves Christians, baptized in the grace of God, it means we are called to this kind of love, a kind of love that changes our lives, a kind of love that demands we lay down our lives. Lay down our lives. 
For our Jewish friends, the expression Kaddish Hashem, literally to honor the name of God, has the same meaning as when we Christians say, lay down our lives. Now, I'm not talking about martyrdom. And when John used this phrase, he wasn't either. In fact, his example of what it means to lay down your life is to be a person who has the goods of this world and gives it away to people with need. John reminds us that our privilege is a gift of this world, a poisoned gift. White privilege is a gift of Satan. Piles of money in banks in a city where 77,000 people sleep on the streets is a gift of Satan. And make no mistake, there is nothing wrong with being white. There's nothing wrong with money. The wrongness is when we refuse to lay down our lives for our neighbors, when we refuse to let go of that privilege and money and resources, and when we let our guilt turn our gaze away instead of letting the eyes of our heart be opened, instead of bearing witness. We have to love God and each other more than we love anything else in the universe more than money, more than power, more than respectability, more than social status, more than privilege, more than comfort. John wrote this letter to his community and to us. And he said, little children, let us lay down our lives. He knew that it was a challenge. It's not something easy. He knew that it was a challenge in this world where empire tries to control every aspect of our lives. And for us in this pandemic, in the year 2021, I mean, we are absolutely completely exhausted. So how do we keep giving? How do we, how do we lay down our lives when it feels like we have nothing left to give? How is it possible for us to do that when it feels like the ground beneath us is being pulled away? We can't even gather in church how little we have and we are so desperate to cling to it. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. You see, dear people, it is possible for one reason and one reason only. There is another here with us. Jesus is the cornerstone, Peter tells us, of the new world we are building now. God restores our souls David tells us, and our cups will overflow because the love of God is deeper and wider than all of the sin and loss and heartbreak of this world. Jesus is the good shepherd, John tells us, and he will not leave us alone as we do this work. We are following someone and there is someone with us. The peace of Christ be with you always is not a greeting. It's a description. Christ dwells in me and you right now, right here. Our hearts need not condemn us. We need not drown in worry or guilt or despair. Instead, we will feel holy peace and love never ending, grace covering us, God abiding in us, our cups overflowing. Church, in the knowledge of the resurrection, let us have boldness before God. God, teach us how to lay down our lives for justice and love. Be with us as we bear witness with eyes wide open. Help us to live into your kingdom. Embody us with your spirit, your breath flowing through us, your son walking beside us, as we try each day to love as you have called us. Amen.
If you have a bowl of water, I'd encourage you to bring that to front and center as we give thanks for our baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Holy God, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. 
Glory to you for Lake Michigan, for oceans, for rivers and waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Praise to you for your saving waters, Noah and the animals. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Through this water, remind us of our baptism. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Wash away the sin within us and drown the evil around us. Shower us with your spirit that your forgiveness, grace, and love may be renewed in our lives. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Loving Shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we, that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Curb any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in uplifting, in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may lay down our lives for those in need, especially those we name aloud or in the chat feature. For Cassidy. For Hafiz. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Saving shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community in our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of pandemic challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection, hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you, especially Blessed Mary, Mark the Evangelist, Catherine of Siena, and Philip and James apostles. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Well, greetings once again, everyone, on this Good Shepherd Saturday, the fourth Saturday of Easter. 
We are so grateful to have you with us and so grateful for our preacher tonight. Can we give it up just one more time for Kayla? What a beautiful sermon. Thank you for bringing that to us tonight. I don't have very many announcements for you tonight, but just to kind of follow up on a poll that was done last week about returning to in-person worship. We took that poll and it wasn't a great sample size, but judging from the response, what we are deciding to do right now is to just continue to worship here at HT Loop on Zoom. Um, as HT Lakeview migrates to YouTube and Facebook Live for virtual worship, this will be the place where you can still come and worship on Zoom uh, to have this experience where you can unmute and say your prayers aloud or enter into the chat. You can also do that on YouTube as well, but it's not quite the same. If you would like an in-person experience, those opportunities will be at HT Lakeview for the time being, but stay tuned. We're still um, deciding and making decisions about uh, what in-person worship could look like here at HT Loop, but for the time being, we will remain on Zoom. The only another announcement that I have tonight is actually not my own. I'm going to actually turn it over uh, to Jenna Payton, who has a great announcement to share with us. So Jenna, please take it away. Hello, friends. Um, remember how in the before times we used to gather together, most definitely within six feet of each other, and enjoy fellowship with each other? It's been a minute. And now with the miracle of science and vaccines in arms, we can finally begin to gather again in person with a few safety precautions in place. My name is Jenna Payton, and I invite you to join me and others from our Holy Trinity community in a service and fellowship opportunity with and for our Holy Trinity members, Audrey and Ariel Frost. You may know Ariel, who shares her gifts as choir member, cantor, and viola player with their congregation. And you may know her mother, Audrey, who uh, helps with the young children in the nursery and is famous for hosting the monthly Kids Night Out. On Thanksgiving Eve 2019, the house next door to the Frost family was significantly damaged by arson. And that fire caused damage to the Frost family home and backyard. After the fire, while the family was living at a hotel, their home was burglarized and damaged further. The impact on the family was huge. We invite you to help restore their south side home and yard on May 15th and May 22nd. We need tools, finances, and good old fashioned labor to help us achieve this goal. We need people of all skill sets for every imaginable task from picking up glass from the blown out next door windows to landscape repairs to sanding and painting a wrought iron fence. It's a lot of work, two days worth, but we can do it together. In the e-news and dropped in the chat, thanks to Bo, you will find a link to a webpage with more information. This also includes two sign, -up, sign up genius links. One sign up genius is for volunteering at the Frost Home on May 15th and May 22nd. You can sign up for either or for both days. The second sign up genius is to lend tools and needed equipment. Thanks to a Thrivent grant, each workday volunteer will get lunch from Pop Bellies and a super cool one of a kind Thrivent t shirt. If you are unable to volunteer on either workday, would you be able to help us financially? We're volunteering our labor, but need financial support to purchase the landscaping, fence, and other items. Via the link in the chat and e-news, you can donate any amount to the Frost Family Home Repairs. The need is there, and we, together as a community, can meet that need. And together, we can not only enjoy each other's fellowship in the lovely backyard at the Frost Family Home, but we can make a difference for this family that means so much to so many of us. If you have questions, please call, email, or text me. My info is also in the chat. See you on May 15th and the 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. So, so beautiful. And thank you so much for organizing it. It's exactly what church is all about. So we hope that you can uh, take up Jenna's challenge and offer to join us on May 15th or the 22nd or both. And uh, if you can't be there in person, obviously there are things that preclude some of us from still gathering. 
uh, there are opportunities to give financially as well. So thank you for all of those ways in which you've invited us to give. We will continue now with our liturgy with the thanksgiving for the word. Praise to you, O God, for your word of life, creating a wondrous universe, proclaiming freedom from captivity, and becoming the song of your people. We praise you, O God, for your word. We praise you, O God, for your word. Your word is made flesh among us. With Mary in the garden, you call us by name. With Thomas beholding your wounds, you call us to believe. With sheep of other folds, we are gathered by your voice. Your word names our death and our life. A seed that falls into the earth and dies. Rain and snow that come down from heaven to water the earth. A vine in which we abide. Through your word, you appoint us to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. We bless you, O oh God, for your word. We bless you, O oh God, for your word. By your living word, we are witnesses of these things. Breathe into us your Holy Spirit. Open our minds to understand the scriptures. Give us wisdom to declare what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Fill us with strength to love, not in word or speech alone, but in truth and action with every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, we join in the hymn of all creation. And we thank you, O oh God, for your living word. We thank you, O oh God, for your living word. Amen. And trusting in God's tender motherly care, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice to be one flock within one fold. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Hallelujah.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. And now, as we conclude our service, I invite you into gallery view as we share the peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. God's peace, everyone.